Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2016 State of the City Address uh, produced by your five-star Greater Irving Las Colinas Chamber of Commerce. Will you please rise and join me in welcoming the Irving Police and Fire Honor Guard who will present the colors and also the Uplift North Hills Preparatory Choir who will perform the national anthem. Please rise. It's my honor tonight to introduce um, Judge Ed Kincaid. Um, Dr. Judge Kincaid is a lifelong resident of Irving and um, serves the U.S. District Court as a judge for the North District, North, Northern District of Texas. 
He's a Baylor University and Baylor Law School, school grad. Pretty sharp in my book. Um, he was instrumental in developing a canine for champions um, for independence. Um, and I got to meet the judge at a cowboy game where at halftime they um, handed out or introduced dogs to uh, their, their masters. And it was a, quite a moving event. Um, Canine's champion for independence, which trains dogs to be service animals for those with disabilities. Judge Kincaid trained his own uh, yellow lab, Bo, to be a pet therapy dog, and he and Bo have been a regular uh, hospital visitors for some time now, and I just learned that, that Bo passed away recently. But um, the good news is Bo has started a, a whole system of providing great, greatly trained dogs uh, for those in need. To be a pet therapy dog, um, he and Bo have been regular visitors to the hospital, and more importantly, the judge was so inspired by the contribution that service dogs can make to the quality of life uh, for a disabled individual. He's become a visionary, an advocate for canine companions for independence facility, which is located right here in Irving. Not only um, is this the first such facility in Texas, it's also the first in the nation to be associated um, with the healthcare system, the Baylor healthcare system. A very special campus is named for the Kincaid family to, to honor the contributions of Judge Kincaid um, has made to the healthcare industry and to Irving. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Judge Kincaid to the podium. It's really named for Bo Kincaid, I have to admit, and all the contributions he made. He was a great dog. When he and I would walk through the Baylor Healthcare campus one day, I was thinking, man, I'm a federal judge. I got appointed by the President of the United States for life, and I'm the chairman of the board of this huge healthcare system, now the largest in the state. I'm a pretty big deal. You know, all my buttons were busting off even more than my overweightness. And feeling full of myself and this little man came up to me in the hallway and tapped me on the shoulder and he said, hey, are you the guy with Bo? And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm the guy with Bo. If you haven't had a chance, I hope you will come visit our 24 dogs in training out at the uh, North uh, Baylor campus and, uh, and see, those, uh, see those dogs. If you would, uh, please join me in prayer. Our Father, we thank you for the opportunity to live in a city where the leaders have been visionary. Those in the past who have made sure that we had wonderful schools, police, fire, made sure we had enough water, made sure the pipes under the ground were, many of whom are buried in Oak Grove Cemetery as I walk through and see their names. We thank you for those past leaders, but Lord, we thank you for those who are here today who are standing up, making sure that Irving is moving forward, making the kind of economic forward movement that we need to make, the kind of transportation movement we need to make, and that those folks who are willing to give their time, their effort, because they love this city. Lord, we thank you for all the places of worship that folks have built in Irving. And we thank you for those who will step up and be counted when, when Irving needs help. We'd ask that you be with us as we consider all these wonderful things that have happened this last year. And we'd ask that you encourage us to step forward and be the kinds of leaders that, that we can be and need to be as we help Irving move into the, into the future. Thank you very much for this opportunity to be here tonight. In thy dear and precious name, amen. Judge, I'm gonna bring uh, Lexi, my black lab, over shortly for training. <laughs> okay.
Okay, um, I appreciate each of you joining us tonight to celebrate the highlights and award-winning accomplishments of our city has achieved in 2015 um, and to consider the future of the city of Irving. We had a, a, a mayor's uh, breakfast recently and uh, I made the comment, these are really good times and we should celebrate uh, the good times that we're having in Irving. Often we tend to talk about maybe issues, but uh, these are good times and we're here to celebrate tonight. I'm sure everyone here tonight who is uh, social media savvy, we encourage you to share um, your favorite part of tonight's signature program by tagging the city of Irving and the Chamber of Commerce on Facebook and Twitter. Um, I left my phone home today, so I can't do it. Um, but um, I can see that a lot of you are doing that right now. I see a lot of phones. Okay. All right. All right. Um, before we go any farther, we have many um, elected and appointed officials here that I'd like to acknowledge um, and thank for their great uh, efforts and partnership with the city of Irving and the Greater Irving Las Colinas Chamber of Commerce. Um, please hold your applause to the end until all the officials have been introduced. I'll ask you to stand as I announce your names. The first one is Irving State Representative uh, Matt Randy, Rodney Anderson, okay. Dallas County Commissioner Elbo Garcia, City of Irving, City Manager Chris Hillman, Chris. Deputy Mayor, D Deputy City Manager Michael Morrison. Assistant City Manager Ramiro Lopez. Assistant City Manager Max DuPont. General Counsel Charles Anderson. City Secretary uh, Shani Jennings. Chief Police Larry Boyd. Fire Department Victor Conley. Mayor Beth Van Dyne, Deputy Mayor Pro Tem Brad Orleski, I'm going to murder this. Okay, thank you. My, my, please forgive me. Gerald Ferris, Councilman. Gerald David Palmer, Councilman. Oscar Ward, Councilman. Phil Rydell, Councilman. And Councilman John Danish. Next is the Irving Conventioner and Visitors Bureau, Chairman David Cole, David, and Executive Director Mara Goss, Mara, okay. And then the Irving ISD Board of Trustees, President uh, Randy Randall, Vice President Dr. Stephen Jones, and then the Las Colinas Association, uh, Rick Bidney, Rick. And finally, the Carrollton Farmers Branch Board of uh, Trustees, Superintendent Bobby Burns. Thank you. Round of applause. We'd also like to take a moment to thank a few other people. Our presenting sponsor this year is Verizon Corporation. Thank you, Verizon. Platinum sponsors are HCAS Express. Okay, gold sponsors are AVL Services, my own company, NCH Corporation, Kroger, FlowServe, and Citigroup. Silver sponsors are Cotton, Smith, and Abbott, Baylor Scott and White Medical Center of Irving, HMS. Embassy City Church, Michael Stores, Credit Union of Texas, Dallas County Utility and Reclamation District, Irving Flood Control District Section 3, Hold Cat, Reliant and NRG Company, Cushman Wakefield, University of Dallas, Right, University of Dallas, Liberty Mutual, Walmart, 
Southgate Constructors, Boyle and Lowry LLP, Scantia, um, Aztec Omega, Dallas Business Journal, and our 2016 Mayor's Award of Excellence Sponsor, Shield Awards. Thank you. I'd also like to have a special thanks to our good friends at Kroger, once again for generously providing the table centerpieces for this event. We'd also like to recognize the Irving Convention Center at Las Colinas, most notably our event manager tonight, April Harrison. April, wonderful job so far. I'm sure you'll do great. Executive Director Mara Gast. I always kid Mar, but we're so fortunate to have Mar in this city and taking care of this great facility. And the rest of her team for great support for the state of the city. Of course, um, I, I said this to some folks at my table tonight. I've been here for a number of events. Every event, the chef knocks it out of the park. So uh, please thank our chef tonight for doing a great meal. So we're excited to say that we anticipate the 2017 State of the City to be held on Tuesday, January 24th, right here. And so thank you, Mar, for that again. So when you're shopping, we encourage you to visit these businesses, do business with these organizations. They're supporting our local community, and without their generosity, the signature program would not be possible. I also would not be, I would be very remiss if I didn't thank our award-winning city staff for their hard work and tireless commitment to improve our city. As well as Roxanne Clary, who heads up the Chamber's Signature Program Committee. Many of these committee members are here volunteering this night or actually working very hard, so I'd like to thank everybody from the Chamber as well. Okay, um, so another thing that we're gonna kick off tonight is something that's very important. It's the sixth annual Best of the Irving Award nominations. So I think each of you have some cards at your desk, okay, best of Irving, and uh, we would like you to go on and vote for uh, your favorite vendor. It's kind of like the People's Choice Awards, so you actually get to make a difference. Um, I was paid $50 by uh, David Cole at Eifertelli's. They want to be best pizza again, I think. But um, anyway, um, you get to choose the best of the best, and those businesses and leaders who have demonstrated excellence and accomplishments over the past year, Irving and beyond. It's, it's really been my honor this year as chairman to work with so many of these businesses in Irving. These people are there always for the city, and they believe in the city far past their business. It's just an incredible feat that they pull off every month, every day, every week, and every hour. So I commend all of you for that. It's really awe-inspiring. It makes our job easy. So online voting opens tonight, so you can get right on your cell phones while you're eating, and um, will continue through March 8th. Make sure that your favorite business leaders are recognized for the quality of work, quality of product, and outstanding customer service. As you all know, Verizon is a longtime corporate citizen of Irving. And in Irving, uh, Verizon continues to be on the cutting edge of innovation and technology. From the connected car to smart cities, to mobile advertising, 
to ensuring that you're connected when it matters most, even when your cell phone's home. I'm sure mine's been ringing all day. Um, Michelle Robinson's here visiting us tonight, and she's Verizon's Executive for External Affairs and Public Policy and Government Affairs for almost half the United States. Please join me in thanking our presenting sponsor, Verizon, and welcoming to the stage, Michelle Robinson. legislature that are here and other distinguished guests on behalf of Verizon, we are honored to join you this evening for this important milestone for the city of Irving. Verizon, as many of you know, is a long-standing member of the Irving community, and I am pleased that we are continuing our partnership well into the future. Out of our 11,000 employees in the state of Texas, we have 3,000 right here in Irving and over 2,000 that work in the building right across Highway 114. This campus and the vacant property surrounding it, also owned by Verizon, remain an important regional hub for our growing business. And it's no secret that Verizon offers competitive salaries and great benefits to our employees globally and right here in Irving. That's because here in Irving, we employ sought after professionals working in IT, networking, engineering, finance, product management, marketing, and operations and the all-important sales. And together, our employees continue to enable the digital world with the technology and solutions that society increasingly relies on to communicate and to conduct business. And so the 110 acres that Verizon owns across from our Hidden Ridge campus is the former homestead of the iconic Mr. Ben Carpenter, whose legacy as a central part of Irving's business culture and lifestyle today. As I speak, we are hard at work creating a master plan to develop this land into a very special transit-oriented development with mixed-use components that keep, that's in keeping with Mr. Carpenter's legacy and the future of this great city. It's also good news that this new development will come with a well-known anchor tenant just across the street, Verizon. I hope that you all had a chance during the reception to see some of the renderings of our new development project outside the doors here. What we're doing is really special and we are very, very excited about it. We envision a development that will house other large corporate offices in a pedestrian friendly, workable area, walkable area with green space, high end retail, restaurants, a hotel and residential options. We believe with the dart rail in our front yard and with the premier location being here in Irving that this is a very special opportunity for an exciting new vibrant development in Irving and Las Colinas that will complement the community's current and future planned assets. As we move beyond conceptual planning, however, and into design, we're looking forward to leveraging future-minded smart city technology to ensure that our development has built-in technology to enable maximum efficiencies and sustainability. We also would like to see the lifestyle core serve as a center of innovation and a place for the startup entrepreneurial community to connect with Verizon and other corporate tenants in co-working and incubator spaces. As we continue to communicate our vision, our excitement, Excitement around our vision is building, and we are working closely with the Irving Economic Development Partnership to bring this project to fruition, and we sincerely appreciate the really special and incredible cooperation and partnership with the mayor, thank you mayor, the city council, thank you members of the council, the staff of the city of Irving, the chamber, the convention and visitors bureau, and the Las Colinas Association as we work together on something special for our workforce today and for the Irving workforce for the future. 
All of you being present in this room demonstrates your pride and commitment to the success of Irving, and we're glad to join you in furthering the success of this vibrant city. We look forward to being a part of this community for many, many years to come. Thank you very much. Irving, Texas, named one of America's top 50 best cities to live by Wall Street 24-7. Here's a look at the new beginnings of 2015. Oh my goodness, it is so impressive. This is an incredible facility that is at the cutting edge of library services in the United States. This is very, very exciting, very fun. It's all about bringing the music and the people to downtown Irving. Beautiful scenery, there's a lot of carvings out there from the local artists. When you think about it, wouldn't you like to live close to a trail? So it brings developers and a healthier lifestyle. Let these officers in your community know that you support them. I encourage residents to show Irving law enforcement with your support with a verbal high five by saying thank you. have had a very good support from the city. This is a uh, very central area for the entire United States and very close to the airport. I have a corporation that not only invests in its local community, but has made a commitment to help us advance our economic development mission. It's a great day to celebrate. The Irving facility was a clear choice for us in setting ourselves up to be near the airport. We have a great pool of talent within this city. Coming back, and the response that we've gotten from the community and the people has, has been fabulous. We're really, really We're happy to be back in Irving. In another business deal, William Square is sold for nearly $330 million, the highest price for a Dallas area property in 2015. And work underway now means more to celebrate in the years ahead. Water Street, a complex of shops, restaurants, and apartments, is now under construction across from William Square. Also, new homes are set to be constructed along Delaware Creek, drawing new residents to South Irving. And after the ceremonial groundbreaking, work on the nearly $850 million Midtown Express is underway to improve mobility and replace aging, crowded highways. We're really grateful that this time has finally come to start shoveling dirt and getting this road started. New beginnings in Irving, Texas. You know, I want to publicly eat a little crow here first. I miss two very important people, and one of the gentlemen's a, a, an alumni of NCH, Mayor Pro Tem Dennis Webb. Dennis, please stand up. Thank you, my friend. I hope we're still friends. And also, a, another great gentleman, Councilman David Palmer. David, my, my uh, apologies. Thanks for being here tonight, David. I had a long list to read, I'm sorry. Okay. So it's my great pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker tonight, the Honorable Mayor Beth Van Dyne. Beth has served the Irving City Council for six years. She was elected mayor in 2011 and re-elected in 2014. A 30-year resident of Irving, the mayor has a keen understanding of the challenges and opportunity facing our city. She's a passionate advocate for Irving on a national and international levels and is actively involved with the U.S. Conference of Mayors, the National League of Cities, the Texas Municipal League, and North Central Texas Council of Governments. She's committed to bringing new businesses and jobs to our city that will help us extend, ex expand our tax base. She supports new residential developments that will provide expanding housing options to meet the need of companies relocating to our expanding Irving. Our mayor is also focused on the quality 
of life initiatives related to education, one of my passions as well. Clean and safe neighborhoods and recreation and entertainment are high on her list. She's a strong proponent of an open collaborative government. In addition to a 20-year career working with small startup companies, mid-sized private companies, and Fortune 500 corporations, she's a dedicated volunteer and devoted mother of two terrific kids, Katie and Pierce. As chairman of the Greater Las Colinas uh, Chamber of Commerce, I've had the opportunity to work closely with Mayor Beth Van Dyne, and I have to say I like to call her just Beth. Um, and I can tell you that there's no greater supporter of this city's growth and economic vitality. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a well work, well welcome for Honorable Mayor Beth Van Dyne. Beth? <laughs> I watched the video and I think I can go home now. <laughs> right? We all have really good positive. By the way, thank ICTN and the staff who put that together. It's really kind of a, it's a good look. I mean, you can only get so much through um, slides and, and hearing a presentation, but actually seeing some of these things firsthand is really exciting. Um, was anybody else nervous when you saw that slide that said, who will you vote for? I promise I'm not talking about Trump or Cruz or anybody else tonight. We are going to be focused exclusively on the city of Irving. No applause after that? <laughs> so good evening, honored guests. I'm going to stick to the script now. Uh, and welcome to this year's State of the City event. To frame tonight's discussion, I thought about many of the successes of the past year new commercial and residential developments, old businesses, new highway construction, new starts, and some of them on very old projects, and new collaborations and new ideas. A city of new beginnings seemed to best capture the incredible progress we've made and the momentum we have built. And by the way, we, we got that name and it seemed to really fit. I want you to see that piece of art that's right there. That was newly um, um, put into, is it Flagpole Hill, Heinz? And Las Colinas. That was the brand new piece of art, public art, that the Las Colinas Parks Foundation dedicated to Las Colinas. And really hoping to get more businesses involved in that venture. But the name of that sculpture is New Beginning. And I just think it's absolutely beautiful and it really lends itself to the credibility of this evening. Irving was propelled into the national spotlight fairly regularly in 2015. <laughs> Mother Nature had a hand in that, with extensive flooding in May and more this past fall, and the occasional tornado or two, occasional warnings. And earthquakes also continued to rumble through the city, as well as drawing attention to the North Texas region. Cultural differences also took center stage, but we responded by demonstrating leadership and resolve while also forming new collaborations. The key to harness the energy and insight we share around our common goals and leverage that for the greater good. This past year, we started several new initiatives, one of which I'm very proud of. The city hosted an event with more than 65 leaders from our nonprofits and our religious-based institutions. We all got together and our goal was to have an open discussion about the major needs and issues in our community. We talked about it collectively and we focused on solutions. The discussions and ideas generated were inspiring. There were incredible assets and we have incredible assets already here in our community that are working together to address the health and vitality of Irving through these various programs. Critical to their success and necessary tools and resources to not only continue to serve our city, but to take their work to the next level. And later this year, we will launch what we're calling a Shark Tank-like program, where we're going to get these nonprofits, and we're going to coach them how to speak to the business community. And we're going to line a number of them up, and we're going to invite you to participate in figuring out how we can all work together as one city. 
We're going to talk about educating companies about our local needs and allowing them to invest seed funding in these innovative new programs that will directly benefit our community. This is a great model for problem solving, and it's the heart of our job as city leaders, visionaries, and planners, which leads me to tonight's report on the state of the city. In my remarks tonight, I want to focus on three main areas, new economic activity, representing new businesses, new developments, new jobs, and new housing, new infrastructure in the area of education, transportation, and community services, and new horizons and opportunities in Irving. Before we get started, however, I would like us to take a moment to remember all of those people who have helped define Irving. And I want to honor those that we lost in 2015. These were not just residents, they were community leaders that helped define our city and its vision. They were ambassadors that inspired and motivated others by their many contributions to this city. They were mothers, fathers, brothers, and sisters. They were board members, committee members, and community volunteers. They were people of faith, and they believed in our city. Please join me for a moment of silence in their honor. Thank you. As we talk about the many wins for Irving this past year, and more importantly, look ahead to the coming year, I want to take a moment to acknowledge some of the leaders in our community. Elected to the City Council this past year were Phil Riddle and David Palmer, and Deputy Mayor Pro Tem Brad Lamorges was re-elected to his second three-year term. The City welcomed a new Economic Development Director, Scott Connell, and our friends at the Five Star Irving uh, Lost Claims Chamber of Commerce also welcomed a new director of business recruitment, Joey Grisham. Where's Joey? There we are. Who, with Don Williams, who is now the Vice President in Economic Development and Operations, partners with the city for our economic development partnership to attract new businesses to Irving. And it also helps retain and foster the growth of existing businesses. The Irving Arts Center, with the retirement of longtime leader Richard Huff, welcomed Todd Eric Hawkins its new executive director all the way from New York City. You can definitely clap at that. And then we don't have this picture up, but while we're welcoming all of these new faces, we are also getting ready to say goodbye to a, a long time um, dedicated staff member, Charles Anderson, who has been with the city for over 35 years now. He has been our chief legal consultant. He has been the city's attorney, announced earlier this month that he will be retiring from the city of Irving. So Charles, are you out there? You want to go ahead and stand up? We're going to miss you, but I know that you are anxious to get on to retirement. But thank you very much for your 35 years of service to this city. The high-performing team at the city deserves a great deal of credit as well. I'd like to ask City Manager Chris Hillman, members of the City Council, and all the city staff who are here this evening to please stand. And let's give them all a round of applause. Is Alan here tonight? Can I pick on him? Okay, do you guys remember if this was the, this was the pre-box picture, right? Alan Meager saw his picture and he said, no, 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 we need to put him on a box or something. <laughs> it was kind of funny at the time. <laughs> anyway, so I believe that Irving will and has continued to be the economic, the economic epicenter of the North Texas region. And here are just a few examples why. Irving is home to six Fortune 500 headquarters, including Commercial Metals, which, by the way, celebrated its 100th anniversary this year. There are more than 50 Fortune 500 companies with a presence in Irving. And it's not just big businesses that generate buzz here locally. We have six local small businesses that were recognized by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce as Blue Ribbon Small Business of the Year finalists. Nearly 4,600 new jobs were created in Irving this past year. And we've not only gained ground, but we have officially surpassed the peak level of jobs that existed before the recession. Unemployment in Irving 
is now down to 3.7%, which beats out the state unemployment rate of 46 and the national rate of 5%. With such a strong economy, other states and people are taking notice. The Dallas Business Journal and a number of other media outlets have reported on the exodus of companies from California, to the tune, by the way, of 9,000 jobs. And in fact, Wallet Hub has recognized Irving as having the best job market in the nation and as the fourth best city to find a job in the country. Our diversified economy, low cost of living, low tax rates, and high quality of life are hitting home for many people seeking new opportunities. The Irving Economic Development Park, um, Partnership, which markets our city, recruits new businesses both here and abroad and fosters strong connections with our existing businesses. And they reported 20 economic development projects that closed in 2015 representing 1.7 million square feet of development and more than $105 million in capital investments in our city. And there is a robust lineup of business prospects already in the pipeline for 2016. Each year, I like to highlight some of the announcements and new initiatives that are impacting our community. At the end of the year, as you saw in the video, William Square changed hands in the largest commercial office sale of the year with 1.4 million square feet of space, this iconic building sold for a record $330 million to a partnership that included Apollo Global Real Estate of New York, Vanderbilt Office Properties of Chicago, and Hillwood Urban, which is a new urban development company that's part of Hillwood Development Company, a Ross Perot Jr. company in, here in North Texas. Two major projects that we highlighted at last year's event came to fruition this year. The Texas Musicians Museum, which was a labor of love for so many in this community, opened its doors in South Irving, doubling as a museum and as a music venue. It needs to be on everyone's list of things to do and see in our city. The $111 million Texas Proton Center for Proton Therapy, which is the first cancer center in North Texas that uses state-of-the-art proton beam therapy, it opened this fall and began treating patients, its first patients, in November. And for those of us wanting more op options to entertain families, friends, and clients, several new restaurants opened, and some were oldies and goodies that expanded. Among the openings were Di Rossani's down in the Heritage District, which, by the way, has the best New York-style pizza in the Metroplex. You need to check it out. The 54th Street Restaurant and Draft House, which if you have not had their fried cheese curds, you are missing out and the original Pancake House, which anybody who loves thick bacon will absolutely fall in love with the original Pancake House. It's a good thing. And then in other entertainment news, the ranch at Las Colinas opened its new patio after significant re renovations. They expanded the capacity of their live music venue that is a huge draw for both visitors and locals. And in fact, that entire center on 114 in MacArthur has become such a popular entertainment complex that even on Wednesday nights, you are hard pressed to find parking. Another spot you should take your family, friends, and clients is the Irving Arts Center. Check out, you will find some of the best live music with our orchestras, ballets, and musicals in the country. In fact, Opera News just named Lyric Stage's recording of the Golden Apple, one of the top 10 international recordings of 2015. And for the 19th consecutive year, the Dallas Morning News named a Lyric Stage production as one of the top 10 theatrical events of the year. Last year alone, patrons traveled from 20 states in 387 zip codes to see Lyric Stage productions. Congratulations, Stephen Jones, on the well-earned recognition. And let's not forget about some of our amazing hotels. The Four Seasons Resort, has invested over $20 million in renovations this year, including updates and enhancements to its spa and fitness center. And its conference spaces and restaurant will undergo renovations, I think, starting next week. Is that right, as you are with us this evening? So stay tuned for more information. And if you drove along 114 this past year, you saw the expanse of new single-family housing developments from Heinz on either side of the highway. This is a major win for the city of Irving, an increase in the number of options available to executives and professionals who work here, but in the past have chosen to reside in places like South Lake 
Colleyville, Capel. The city's partnership with Heinz has proved successful as these homes are just not concepts. They're just not drawings on some board, but they're actual bricks and mortar with elegant landscaping and beautiful amenities. With new corporate campuses under development like Cypress Waters and other businesses moving to or expanding in Irving, housing stock is always a key issue for employers. With this development and others in Valley Ranch and South Irving, we are able to keep pace with demand, grow our tax base while still seeing local home values increase. In the past year, not only has the city seen planned projects actually built, but we have continued to plan for the future. We celebrated the groundbreaking of the Water Street development this past November, by the way, that officially kicked off this project after 12 years of planning. This highly anticipated mixed-use development will offer more than 60,000 square feet of retail, in addition to multifamily housing, and included in the retail are several new restaurants, like, and I'm going to butcher this name, Olivella's Pizzeria, Twisted Root Burger Bar, Main Street Bistro and Bakery, and the Londoner Pub, with long-awaited outdoor options, which is dining along the water, something that uh, you don't see in too many cities in North Texas. Patios overlooking Lake Carolyn will be a huge draw for visitors and tourists, as well as a value-added amenity for area residents and employees who want to be able to walk to restaurants and shops. A stone's throw away, the Irving Music Factory project is progressing after some carefully navigated negotiations on the city's part. For the first time in this project's history, the council unanimously supported an agreement that would gain revenue share for the city and provide a drop dead date for the developer to finalize their financing. If financing is not attained by the end of February, the developer contracted to abandon all rights to the property and the agreement is void and the city can move forward without concerns of lawsuits or other delays. If the developer is successful, construction should be completed in early 2017. But either way, the city is in a much better position on this project than it was just a year ago. Also in Las Colinas, da -da, the long-awaited Whole Foods development, which individually a number of you have come up and are so excited about, and I'm finally happy to be able to say, if you drive by, you can see the sign. It is up. And word on the street is they're actually going to be opening early. They're going to be opening in June of this year. Zoe's Kitchen just opened last week and Fidelity Investments will soon follow. Residents and visitors alike have been asking for these stores for years, so it's very, very gratifying to see them in their final build-out stages. And speaking of grocery stores, we're in negotiations with two new grocery stores for South Irving and Irving Mall. Residents here have continually challenged the city to incentivize new grocery options in this area, and these desires are now being met. There's plenty of improvements happening in South Irving for those who haven't visited in a while. In addition to the Musicians Museum that opened, new restaurants and shops continue to pop up along Main Street and Irving Boulevard, adding to the revitalization of the Heritage District. Heinz Development continues to move forward on the Delaware Creek Project, which will bring in almost 100 new and much needed single family homes to this area. Combined with discussions on entrepreneurial opportunities and other strategies to entice young professionals and families to move to South Irving, we will see a lot of dirt flying in the next few months. Rounding out the economic development updates are a few highlights on projects still in the planning stages. We announced this past year that the new Convention Center Hotel will be a Weston property. Having a property of that caliber on site will greatly enhance the Convention Center's ability to attract larger groups that require lodging as part of their meetings, conferences, conventions, and other special events. The completion of the DART Orange Line, into which we invested $1 billion. Are we up there? Come on. Continues to yield interest, and we are working to develop land in and around the former stadium. So this is 400 acres of prime developable land that's one of the most valuable and highly visible community gateways in the Metroplex which I'm sure all of you would prefer not to have a DOT staging area 
greet visitors as their per first impression of Irving. <laughs> Securing a marquee development for this site is essential, one that will yield significant economic benefits as well as serve the needs of potential major employers and the community as a whole. The city has worked with Oliver McMillan out of San Diego for over two years on this site and is moving toward a formalized agreement to, to develop this property with higher end retail, boutique hotels, movie theater, housing, corporate offices, and open park space. City staff and I have worked vigorously with TxDOT and DART to get commitment letters for the new signature bridge that will connect the former stadium site to a new DART station on the other side of the highway. And a special thank you, by the way, goes out to Michael Morris with North Central Texas Council of Government for his partnership and determination in working to prioritize Irving's needs and transportation in the region. This type right here, go back, there we go. That type of development is something that we have been actively pursuing for the last 12 years. This is a big deal. We're also working closely with Verizon, and thank you guys for being here tonight and for sponsoring this event. On a proposed 157-acre corporate campus that includes 3.5 million square feet of offices, housing, 85,000 square feet of retail, and a 150-room hotel. Plans also include a, mu a new commuter rail, and again, underscoring how these types of development are in such high demand. As we look to the future, there's no shortage of potential. We begin 2016 with more than 40 active economic development projects on the books and look forward to the opening of 7-Eleven headquarters, their corporate headquarters. In fact, I understand that 7-Eleven moved their first 400 employees here last week. Further discussions on the new Verizon campus and much more. This past year, Irving experienced almost nearly double-digit property increase valuations. And it is this virtuous cycle that allows us to maintain our tax rate. We are honored and thankful that so many people and businesses are moving here, expanding our tax base so that we don't have to increase your tax rate. With all of this increased economic development activity, however, comes the responsibility of ensuring our infrastructure in terms of roads, water, education, and other critical services, such as public safety and community services, and keeping up with all of the needs. And everything that I've mentioned, it's not just a list. These things don't just haphazardly occur. It's solid evidence. It's confirmation that the hours, the days, and years that business and city leaders spend planning and strategizing are with purpose in vision. Roads are designed for plans for future development. Zoning is intentionally defined for a specific outcome, be it needed retail, housing, or office. The budget is tirelessly divided and prioritized to spend where it's most necessary and effective. Folks, discussions on the effects of broken sewer pipes are not sexy, but anyone living in the urban center this spring and experience the aftermath of extensive flooding, you know how imperative these discussions are. Each decision we make has long-term consequences on what this city will ultimately look like, who will live here, and what types of businesses will locate here. We were in high gear advancing and working through our capital improvement projects. In 2015, we completed construction on 24 projects totaling 36 $0.5 million. These included streets, parks, drainage, water, wastewater, and other facilities. Two of this year's highlights included the opening of the new South Irving Library. And again, if you haven't seen this wonderful addition to our city, you need to go by. We constructed the Lone Star Trail Connector, which connects Irving's, Irving's Campion Trail to Grand Prairie's Lone Star, Star Trail System enhancing this region's recreational asset and now giving me an excuse not to run it because it's way too long. <laughs> Corridor enhancements were a high priority this year, including completing construction on O'Connor Boulevard from 114 to Riverside Drive. And I know that it only took a year. and For some, it felt like it felt, took 10, but it's done just in time for us to start work on Las Colinas Boulevard. And now with the median work underway, completing construction on the utility undergrounding project along MacArthur Boulevard and finishing up road construction 
on MacArthur between 183 and Grawaller in finishing the Northgate Drive Corridor Monument Project. And speaking of road improvements, we're also probably dodging a lot of orange cones as the Midtown Express gets underway. And it seems like every road in North Texas is under construction. But if you look at the opening of the new LBJ lanes, you'll see that there is light at the end of the tunnel. This $850 million project that spans nearly 28 miles across highways 183, 114, and Loop 12 will dramatically impact mobility in a very congested area. I'm sure many of you have shared the experience of sitting in the bottleneck at either end of the short section of 114 or by the University of Dallas that TxDOT has already expanded. These improvements highlight the importance of partnerships with TxDOT and with COG in the Metroplex cities and DART and numerous other transportation authorities and associations. And I want you to know that Irving is in the middle of those plans and is benefiting from that regionalism. The next several years will be tough on all of us as we learn new routes and navigate detours in this area. I hope you'll take advantage of resources that can help you stay on top of closures and construction activity. The website www.drivemidtown.com is the quickest source for up-to-date information and you can sign up for traffic alerts, construction alerts and incident notices that will ping you in the case of problems. The end product though will substantially improve traffic flow in and through Irving. Ultimately, it will foster even more economic development while adding to our quality of life by decreasing the amount of time we spent in traffic until that is our ED department brings us more business, which is a good thing. But please note that while we have invested in all of these projects and these properties. We passed our annual budget this year without a tax rate increase. <laughs> we maintained our AAA bond rating and we still enjoy one of the lowest tax rates in North Texas. Last year I had received an email from Carter Holston thanking the city for keeping its taxes low and acknowledging that our low tax rate was one of the reasons why NEC retained its corporate headquarters in Irving. And I'm sure they're not alone. We realize that other cities are competitive and that they often offer short-term incentives that we might not necessarily be able to match. However, given Irving's high quality of life, low tax and water rates, combined with our pro-business environment and location, we come out far ahead in the long run. And I'm here to assure you that you have made the right decision by staying and building in Irving. With that in mind, the backbone of any community is its educational system. People decide where they're going to plant roots based on safety, location, and schools. So I'm gonna ask if you are a teacher, an administrator, or a school board member, please stand. I've worked closely with you for years and have long been a supporter of our Irving schools. But this year, you have really stood out for your dedication to our students, your successes in and out of the classroom, and for your firm commitment to foster the hopes and dreams of our future leaders. And for that, I thank you. Irving ISD was named the 2015 Advanced Placement District of the Year for mid-sized school districts. Singley Academy earned all seven distinctions from the Texas Education Agency, ranking the, ca the campus among the top 1.9% of Texas schools. The school district was also named a top digital school district for its use of innovative technologies, such as its one-to-one -one laptop program, its STEM curriculum, and flipped classroom instruction. Carrollton Farmers Branch ISD had its own successes, with Dr. Bobby Burns being named Texas Superintendent of the Year. Expansion was a big focus, focus in this district this past year with La Vallita Elementary, Barbara Bush Middle School, and Ranch View High all receiving new additions to their buildings, including new classrooms, athletics, and fine arts spaces, and in addition, Las Colinas Elementary opened a new facility, and Freeman Elementary had a new classroom wing added. A group of outstanding Ranch View High students earned over $29 million in scholarships, highlighting the caliber of students that this city is graduating. 
Irving also celebrated the opening of the Great Hearts Irving Charter School. And this was truly a collaborative community effort and much needed. Uplift North Hills Preparatory continued to receive outstanding distinct distinction designations from the Texas Education Agency for excellence in academic achievement. 18 students, 18 students from the current senior class were named National Merit Semifinalists or Commended Scholars. Folks, that's 15% of their graduating class. They should be commended. At the post-secondary level, the University of Dallas just opened its 45,000 square foot SB Hall, the new home for the, for the Sastish and Yasmin Gupta School of Business. Several hundred people turned out on a beautiful Friday afternoon for the special occasion. And they're not done with construction yet. A new administrative building will be getting underway this year. UD continues to draw national acclaim and recognition from major organizations like US News and World Report, the Princeton Review, and Forbes. This has helped drive increased awareness of the university's academic reputation and interest from prospective students, resulting in its highest ever enrollment this school year. Behind Rice University, UD is now drawing the second highest percentage of out-of-state students and continues to enable students from around the world to experience its superior liberal arts curriculum. And having a university of this caliber in Irving helps elevate awareness of our community. And it's also a critical piece of the workforce development pipeline, a key factor in corporate relocation decisions. And another key deciding factor in moving decisions for both businesses and families is public safety. I am honored to report that Irving was named to the top list of top 10 safest cities in the US. We have experienced crime reduction for 11 straight years, thanks to, thanks to our outstanding police department and their many partners. In 2007, Irving marked its lowest crime rate on record, and we have set a new record every year since. If you were with the Irving Police Department, would you please stand? I know there are some of you out here. I want to personally thank Irving Police Chief Larry Boyd and your entire Irving Police Department. This year, we've witnessed across the country incidents with police officers being harshly criticized for doing their jobs, for being second-guessed and undermined by leaders who should know better. And in some very harsh instances, we've even seen officers gunned down in the line of duty. I want to thank you for your commitment, for your dedication, for your sacrifice, and your service to our city. Thank you. Dave Ramsey once said, great leaders are effective not because they know all the answers, but because they have the tenacity to act. Leadership, as it turns out, is really the act of making intentional decisions and accepting responsibility for them. A few years ago, I attended the US Chamber of Commerce Small Business Summit, and I heard retired Air Force four-star general Michael Hayden speak. He's also the former director of the National Security Agency and former director of the CIA. His story was very compelling. He talked about going in to these two different agencies that were in very different places when he walked in. When he became the director of the CIA, people were in a state of almost panic. They didn't know if they were going to lose their jobs. They didn't know if they were going to get the support of their bosses. They hadn't up until then. And they were scared. And there was one particular employee, he said, that made a decision. Now, in hindsight, it turned out to me maybe the right decision, maybe the wrong decision, but everybody can be Monday morning quarterback. What he said was leaders have to enable, have to empower their workforce to make decisions. But that's only half the battle. Once you have empowered them to make the decision, you have to support them in the decisions that they make. And I stand here today 
very proud of the decisions that our city staff, our police department, and our school district have made. And thank you all for doing that. And it was kind of funny because one of the comments was being a leader means disciplining them when they do things wrong, but it also means standing between them and the people who want to throw things at them when things don't work out right. Well, I would say most of the people in this room, I would argue that a large majority of people in this city are willing to take those things that are thrown. And I think if there's a silver lining in anything that's happened this last year, it is the strength and love and dedication to this city has increased by multitudes. I have no doubt that our police department is among the best in the country, as is our fire department. We have approved funding for the construction of a new fire station on the south service road of 635 between Beltline and Olympus, so we'll see construction start on that soon. We're also partnering with Grand Prairie on the construction of a joint fire training facility that will be a great asset to both of our communities. In terms of greater good projects, there are a few worth mentioning that are close to my heart. Judge Kincaid, thank you so much for giving us those opening remarks. We opened the Canine Companions for Independence, the Kincaid Campus. It was a facility in collaboration with Baylor Scott and White in November. And the campus, which will train assistant dogs for people with disabilities, is named for my dear friend, Judge Ed Kincaid. And he has worked for years at the Irving facility visiting patients with his dog, Bo, and I am so sorry for your loss. The hospital, which raised $10 million to build the center, is the first health system in the country to integrate assistant dogs into its physical and cognitive therapy programs. And excellence in animal services is a theme, apparently, as our animal care campus, which includes Irving Animal Services and the DFW Humane Society, received a prestigious award for its Clear the Shelters adoption event that's gone national. This annual event resulted in nearly 20,000 adoptions nationwide and a record 179 in a single day at our facility in Irving. As much as I like to acknowledge Irving's finer points, it's much more telling when outside organizations take notice of our community. And here are some of the accolades that we've received this past year. We've been identified as the best city to start a career. 20th best city for families, best city to stay, number one place to live in your 20s, hardest working cities in America, Fit Friendly Employer Platinum Award, we retained our AAA bond rating, we won the Excellence Award for Code Enforcement, Parks and Rec, Communication, and Traffic Safety. And just yesterday, the Dallas Observer ranked North Irving as one of Dallas County's 10 fastest growing neighborhoods. There is tremendous momentum building around economic development and economic prosperity that will continue this year and beyond. New developments such as Water Street and the former stadium project will continue and start to take shape. We will continue to invest in South Irving, bringing new homes, new retail, and new businesses to this area that has so much heart and so much history. Other areas of the city will continue to attract the attention of companies and young professionals. Our proximity to both downtown Dallas and the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport are ideal. DFW is the fourth busiest airport in the world and is experiencing its greatest international expansion in its history, with 22 new international destinations and 11 new carriers in the last five years alone. Our vision of the city must be diverse to reflect our richly diverse population, which is a constant balancing act. Some want quaint, quiet suburban neighborhoods, while others want urban apartments in the heart of restaurants, parks, and bustling streets. Some want peaceful shops and museums, while others crave loud music and dancing. Some desire shopping and manicured shopping centers with stores that they come to know and trust, while others wish for the off the beaten path, the mom and and mom and pop shops with their own character and unique histories. The good news is that with 235,000 people and over 67 square miles, we have the ability to get all of those things done. And none of these accomplishments and successes 
only a handful, by the way, of which I've been able to talk about tonight, would be possible without the incredible leadership of our city council, our city staff, our engaged and dedicated residents and volunteers, our partners at the Chamber and the Irving Convention and Visitors Bureau, who hosted us this evening, by the way. So Maura, Maura Gass, I saw you over there. Thank you. Great job. And our world-class business community, much of which is represented here this evening. I'd also like to thank our elected officials who advocate for our interests at the state and federal level. I should mention that state representatives Matt Rinaldi, Rodney Anderson, and Raphael and Shia along with Senators Don Huffine and Rodney, um, I'm sorry, Royce West, were instrumental in, among other things, supporting our efforts to get an additional $2.2 million added to the budget for seismic study to assess the genesis of our earthquakes. And we're going to hear more about that, hopefully, later in this year. So in the spirit of recognizing and celebrating the contributions of those who drive our community, bringing new energy, new thought, and new leadership to the table, I am pleased to announce the recipient of this year's Mayor's Award of Excellence. I initiated this award last year because I wanted to recognize an Irving company, an organization, or an individual that has had a long history in the community, has been a leader within its given industry among peers, and is dedicated to making the community or region stronger and more vibrant. These recipients inspire others to be servant leaders and set the bar high for excellence in community engagement. It's our opportunity to thank those who are truly changing the city of Irving for the better. I'm so pleased to announce this year's winner. This company has been a member of the Irving community since 2000. A leader in its industry, the company has 6,500 employees in here in Irving and 230,000 worldwide. With more than 200 years of experience, the company connects millions of people across hundreds of county, counties countries, and cities, helping clients meet the world's toughest challenges and embrace its greatest opportunities. What a great philosophy. I wish I could share all of this company's community activities with you tonight, but I'm only going to hit a few of the highlights. The company's DFW employees volunteer close to 50,000 hours each year. Employees who volunteer a minimum of 100 hours are recognized for their community service with a National President's Volunteer Service Award. In 2015, there were 121 of these individuals who collectively gave 31,632 hours of volunteer service to local nonprofit agencies. The company is extremely active in the Irving ISD, participating in Junior Achievements, JA in a Day program, the Irving Reads program, and the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship Biz Camp, serving on the Irving ISD Literacy Committee and hosting interns. Likewise, at Carrollton Farmers Branch ISD, the company hosts students from the Barbara Bush Middle School Youth Leaders Program, and they provide volunteers for the Women in IT Training Program. And they sponsored several key initiatives, including the Impact Now Program. The companies and its employees donate money and in-kind uh, donations, as well as volunteer hours to numerous Irving charities, including Irving Cares, Metro Crest Services, Irving Healthcare Foundation, VNA Meals on Wheels, Empower Skills Marathon and March of Dimes for Babies. The company runs an annual United Employee Workplace Campaign, last year donating more than $350,000 to United Way of Metropolitan Dallas. Ladies and gentlemen, this company is all about community, and Irving is proud to recognize them. So please join me in congratulating City as this year's recipient of the Mayor's Award of Excellence. Ronnie Phelps. Site President for City, you want to join me on stage? Where's Rodney? Come on down. <coughs> Don't be shy. Do we need to open you up a little bit? I'm sorry, we're going to get photos and then we're almost done. How are you doing? Good. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You want to say anything? You want to say a few words? No. No, you're good. <laughs> we have a group here. We have a group here. Hey, it's good to see you. 
Can we fit all of you on stage? Wow, we have interns from our local schools here. Thank you, Rodney, and for all of you and your employees and what they do for this community and so many others. You are an inspiration to us all, and we really hope that many more companies would like to get involved in this way. In closing, thank you for allowing me this opportunity to share with you the progress Irving has made this past year and the goals we have for the future. You reflect back on this year, and you can see how far we've come. While we've had much success, we've also had our fair share of challenges. And we've met those challenges head on, unflinching, and with resolve. Resolve that perseveres through knowledge that we are making the difficult but necessary decisions today to shape a successful and vibrant tomorrow. Every day I wake up and I am so proud, so proud of this city's accomplishments. The people who live here, the companies who do business here, the corporations who continue to move here. Irving is a city of progress, innovation, and vision, and it is only getting better. Thank you for your support, your achievements, and your trust. May God bless you in the city of Irving now and in the future. Good night.